All right, we are back, not at our usual desk space, and the reason for it is that I'm running very, very late. So we are camping at Black Rock Campground at Joshua Tree National Park, and I don't wanna pitch a tent in the dark. So we are finalizing our stuff. As you can see, I'm a little bit sped up here, uh, getting some, some clothes for my son ready. And uh, this video is really about composition, so shooting at Joshua Tree, some star shooting, uh, a specific app I use to plan that out, camping gear, camping tips. There's a lot here, so it's gonna be split into part one and part two, and then after that, I'll upload the full, full video. Hope you guys enjoy. That is bright. So let's turn that off. We uh, finally got set up here. I think most of the things I'm gonna do in the morning, but um, trying to get the fire started, wait a little bit. And the main goal for tonight is really to shoot some stars when you're at Joshua Tree. These stars are magnificent. Look at that, look at that. That's the wife goals right there. That's the wife goals right there. Um, so we're gonna wait till it gets a little bit darker, a little bit later, kid will go to sleep and I'll come out try some different compositions and uh, capture those stars. For later. <laughs> I'm using the Photo Pills app to plan out a Milky Way shot. Now the issue here, as you can see there, is the very, very tail end if we follow it all the way across, hopefully you guys can see that there. There's where my interesting Milky Way shot is. Right toward the other side. I want to bring it up above the horizon. Right around there, I think. The main issue there is that the time for that is about 3.30 a.m. So, I will see you guys at 3.30 a.m. <laughs> Good morning. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Hard part about waking up at 4 a.m. Apart from waking up at 4 a.m. is then going back to sleep. But all good. Happy to be out here. I do want to show you guys something because I've talked about this on the channel before. Um, we have a bed here. It's an inflatable bed. And it uses one of these little nifty things. And it's connected like, with a plug. And the plug, basically what it does is it makes sure that whenever there's like a little loss of air, it'll slowly pump the air back into it. So that basically your mattress stays firm all night long. All right, let's go make some breakfast. You know, the truth is you don't need a lot of things to go camping, but once you start to go camping, you're like, oh man, you see areas of improvement. So I'm gonna give you five quick things. If you're looking to invest up your camping game, these things will make a big difference. These stoves right here, Coleman, they sell other brands too. They have these wind protectors. When it's windy and you're trying to cook, this makes a big difference. I've had to cook out of the trunk of my car before. <laughs> I'd rather have this. The jet boil. 
boils water in like a minute and when you're out here with these propane tanks and stuff they're pretty slow this thing is a big lifesaver um, camping out anywhere that's warmer this canopy first time we camped we didn't have this and it was death during the day it was so hot and we didn't have any shade so what we want to do is put this up and then at nighttime take off just the canopy part leave the structure that way if it gets windy you don't wake up to it flown away somewhere number four always make sure you bring more blankets than you think you need the desert anywhere you go gets really cold at 2 3 a.m. and sometimes you'd be surprised how cold you're in there and you're like I wish I would have brought more layers and the last tip also on your tent is to make sure that you have something to put underneath um, sometimes not every single campsite is great in terms of clearing out rocks or having a flat space and you don't want to be sleeping so on something unless you have an air mattress with certain lumps in your back and whatnot so make sure you can bring something a pad just something you can lay over and uh, make sure you get a good night's sleep all right we gotta clean up and let's get going What you guys just saw is the Black Rock Campground uh, Visitor Center. So there's even a little gift shop in there, which I will definitely be coming back, getting some stickers to put on the Thule box. Um, and they had a good map of some of the trails around here. If you look on all trails, which I will talk about later, there are some trails that are like pieces of other trails. So they're almost like you can do a piece of it, you can do all of it. Those are not really listed here. Right here, they're listed as the six mile ones. But if you look on all trails, they'll tell you like, if you don't do the loop, you can do one that's three and a half miles. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about that, but for now, this campsite is really awesome and there is a Starbucks 10 minutes away. So <laughs> we had our morning coffee, we need the afternoon coffee. So let's head out and then we'll go explore the park. So we are at Quail Springs. There's some rock climbing going on. This is really the first place you can have a pit stop to either picnic or use the restroom. Um, so let's keep making our way. All right, we are doing the Minerva Hoyt Trail. I will talk a little bit more about who she is after the trail video. Uh, but for now, it's a quick short hike. Let's just kind of enjoy the views. I don't plan on doing too much photography. As you guys can see, it's nothing but blue sky. Kind of ugly, um, specifically for landscape photography. So we're really here to just enjoy the views and uh, enjoy some short hikes. Definitely seems like the closer you get to Hidden Valley, the more like clustered Joshua trees you get. And these look pretty healthy. When we started this trail, they were kind of spread out and some were dead, some didn't look too good. But as I'm looking straight ahead here, and you guys are looking a little bit behind me here, um, these trees are great and uh, there's a lot more of them.
So this ends here. I think the one thing you should know so you don't get confused is that the Minerva Clerk Trail is one and a half miles one way. So time to head back. So basically when we talk about composition with these big Joshua trees, normally what you want to think about is like, what is the focal point of your photo? So if I have a really, really interesting sky and I want to show off the sky with the Joshua trees, the Joshua trees almost become secondary. So I would try to use my rule of thirds to put the bottom third with a bunch of Joshua trees and then focus on the sky, right? Especially if I'm at a slightly higher elevation. If that's not the case, for example, and I was going to be shooting out here today, nothing but blue skies, kind of ugly, all this open space, I would try and find one big Joshua tree, zoom into it so I don't get as much sky, and make it obvious that the point of the photo is to show off the Joshua tree. Composition is always tricky, um, but I find that out here with these Joshua trees, they're, they're beautiful and they're very unique. And I'm always questioning like, how many do I get in a photo? Do I get a lot? Do I get one? And I think ultimately the question is, what is the point of the photo? Is it the Joshua tree or is it something else? Hope that helps. Let's get back to the car. I am very glad that I woke myself up at 4, 3, 3.45 a.m. last night to shoot the stars because we got some extremely looking threatening clouds that are coming our way and I'm guessing there's not gonna be much star shooting tonight. So I'm very happy I did not wait. Life is a winding road. No telling where it goes. Driving through days and nights. Won't stop for traffic lights. And I, I really wanna know, really wanna know. If I let figure out where the road goes. Even if I'm falling down. I will keep on searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down That's it, that is the Black Rock Canyon Trail. From here, you can do the panorama loop as you guys saw, or you can take that and then go on to another trail that's Warren Peak. For today, we're stopping here. It's been a long day and uh, wanna head back and relax a little bit. So, beautiful trail. This is by far, I think, the prettiest trail we've done here at Joshua Tree. Let's go. That's time to finish off this video. So Black Rock Canyon campground. Um, amazing. The bathrooms are incredibly clean, very family friendly. I see other families out here besides us. Everyone's been super respectful. Uh, it's been a really, really nice time out here, relaxing. Uh, right amount of space, just, just overall very nice. There is one key thing that I think you should know about Black Rock Campground, and that is that it's technically in Joshua Tree, but it's also not. So there's one kind of trail, very long trail that connects Black Rock Campground into Joshua National Park. 
So if you're gonna drive into Joshua National Park you have to, and you're here, you have to drive out and then go through the normal west entrance. You can't go from here. So it's like within the boundaries of the park, but you don't co you don't go into the park and then go to the campground. It's not like Jumbo Rocks or, or Cottonwood, or, you know, the other ones. So this is kind of a one-off within park boundaries. Um, so just something to think about if, you, if you're thinking like, I really wanna stay inside the park so I can just walk, trails, all that stuff. This may not be the right one for you. Uh, the Nature Center, Visitor Center is there. Like, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's pretty great. We've got some kiddos running around. Um, again, wonderful, wonderful time. Now, if you're staying here, there are a bunch of trails and I would recommend that you talk to the rangers at the Visitor Center. They gave us this piece of paper with a bunch of different hikes that you can do. Eureka Peak, 9.6 miles, Burnt Hill Trail, 7.3, Short Loop Hike, 3.9 miles, California Riding and Hiking Trail, 37 miles one way, that's the one that will take you into the park. Panorama Loop Hike, 6.6 .6 miles, Warren Peak and Warren View, 6.3 miles, West Side Loop, 5 miles, and the High View Nature Trail. Uh, it's more of a nature walk for 1.3 miles round trip. Now, if you go on all trails, you will find that you can do pieces of these trails. For example, we did the Black Rock Canyon Trail, and that is a trail that connects, that connects, I think, one of the short loops over to Panorama Loop. Uh, so we just did that in the afternoon, very peaceful, very calm, um, but we didn't do the full Panorama Loop, so that, that specifically was not on this paper. You may want to check other guides. I always recommend all trails, but if you're one of those folks that's anti all trails, I'm sure you can find other blogs out there that explain it better. With that said, hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. Uh, hope you learned a little something. And uh, drop a comment down below if you have any questions about anything, about the trip, about gear. I don't know, any, any way I can help, more than happy to. And happy to share a little bit of the journey here. So thanks for uh, for staying tuned if you're for watching this at the end of the video. And uh, I'll see you guys next week.